In this video, I will explain what is the simulated annealing, one of the settings of the estimation algorithm in Monolix, and when it can be disabled. First, let me recall that SAEM, the algorithm for parameter estimation, is implemented in Monolix with two phases, an exploratory phase and a smoothing phase. The goal of the exploratory phase is to explore a large parameter space to get a neighborhood of the maximum likelihood in only a few iterations. The size of the explored space is related to the standard deviations of the random effects, also called omega parameters in Monolix. The larger the omegas, the larger the explored space is. This is why it is recommended to choose large initial values for the omega parameters, especially if the initial value is far from the actual solution. A large residual error as well provides more flexibility for the exploration. However, the standard deviations of the random effects and the error parameters usually decrease during the estimation, and if their values decrease too quickly, the risk is that SAM might get stuck in a local maximum that can strongly depend on the initial values. To help escape the local maximum and successfully converge to the global maximum, the simulated annealing constrains the variance of the random effects and the variance of the residual error to decrease by 5% at maximum between two iterations. In the interface of Monolix, the settings of SAM, the algorithm for population parameter estimation, can be found with this icon. In the exploratory phase, the simulated annealing is enabled by default. The decreasing rate imposed on the variance of the random effects and the variance of the residual error can be modified. Let me now show an example of what happens with and without simulated annealing. This plot shows the convergence of SAEM when estimating the parameters of the same two-compartment PK model over 500 iterations, starting with all the initial estimates at 1, with simulated annealing in blue and without simulated annealing in green. The switch to the smoothing phase is indicated in red. We can notice several differences. First, the omega parameters, that are the standard deviations of the random effects, and the residual error parameters A and B, all decrease more slowly with the simulated annealing, and in particular avoid the sharp drop visible for the first iterations in green. As I have explained, this allows a wider exploration of the parameter space, and indeed we can see that the estimates for the fixed effects can move further away from the initial estimates than in the case with no simulated annealing. For example, VPOP converges to 8 with simulated annealing, but without, it stays stuck in a local maximum around 3, because omega v is quickly so small that VPOP cannot move anymore. The solution found with simulated annealing is then different than the one without simulated annealing, and for this project, it corresponds to a higher likelihood, so the solution is closer to the global maximum. Thus, this example shows that the simulated annealing is very useful to allow for a more extensive search that improves the chances of converging to the global maximum of the likelihood. We can also notice that the estimates for omega v and omega k21 are close to zero without the simulated annealing, but they are higher than 0 0.1 with the simulated annealing. Moreover, as I can see in the interface for this project with simulated annealing, the standard errors for these omega parameters are very high. This is a side effect of the simulated annealing. It may keep the omega values artificially high and prevent the identification of parameters for which the variability is in fact zero and lead to large values or none in the standard errors. Therefore, once good initial values have been found and there is no risk to fall in a local maximum, the simulated annealing option can be disabled to better identify parameters with no variability. So, as a second step for the estimation of these model parameters, I can use the last estimates as new initial values like this, and then open the settings of SAEM to disable the simulated annealing option. After saving the project under a new name and running SAEM again, here is the convergence of SAEM omega v, omega k12 and omega k21 decrease to very low values. The data is then probably too sparse to correctly identify the inter-individual variability for v, k12 and k21, so their random effects can be removed. 
Coming back to the first example, another difference that you may have noticed is in the convergence indicator that shows very different profiles. The convergence indicator will be the topic of another video. For now, just remember that it is not the log likelihood that I have displayed previously. Due to its definition, if some omega parameters get close to zero, then the convergence indicator also keeps decreasing to a very small value. Keeping high omega parameters then also has the effect of stabilizing the convergence indicator. Finally, since one of the criteria to switch from the exploratory phase to the smoothing phase is the stability of the convergence indicator, this will affect the auto-stop criteria for the exploratory phase. We can now see here the case where the auto-stop is enabled, with the switch to the smoothing phase displayed in blue with the simulated annealing, and in green without the simulated annealing. With the simulated annealing, the auto-stop criteria is triggered after 256 iterations, while without the simulated annealing, the algorithm reaches the maximum number of 500 iterations without triggering the auto-stop. So the take-home message is, keep the simulated annealing option for the first runs to help the convergence to the global maximum, especially when the initial values may be quite far from the initial estimate. As a second step, you may disable the simulated annealing once good initial values have been found and if the variability seems difficult to estimate and you wish to estimate it more precisely, for example because of high standard errors for the omega parameters or also high values for the omegas. This is it for this video. Have a good day!